Hi, this is David with Haggerty, and this is one of our Redline Rebuild updates gone live. Uh, we just brought this pickup in yesterday. We pulled it out of the dirt, and uh, if you ever question our reality, we'll show you a shot of the flat, flat tires, gaping holes. This is the way it, it doesn't turn. You can see where the mud line was up to here. Um, but this is our reality. We are going to redline rebuild this 216 um, uh, stove bolt Chevy. This is a 1950 3600 Chevy truck. Uh, so basically a three quarter ton of the day. And it has not ran in a long time. Uh, I just found a receipt in the glove box that they bought a belt for this in 1970. Now I think it probably ran someplace in between there, but uh, I don't think it's been very recently. So the optimist in me says, let's see if we can turn it over with the starter. We're going to hand crank it first. It has a provision on the front like an old, like a Model A does with a release so you can hand crank it over. We'll do that. I made a, a improvised tool here with a couple old sockets and a, an exhaust stud from the nail head. We're going to run that through. There's actually a hole in the grill for it uh, from the factory. We're gonna do that. I put a little PB blaster down this uh, spark plug holes. And actually, you know, when this was running last, it quite honestly doesn't look horrible. Uh, we've seen a lot worse out of cars we've been driving. So not, uh, not too bad, but I'm gonna take the tractor plugs out of it and put some fresh plugs. But uh, at the end of the day, just going to see if we can make it spin with a starter and who knows, maybe we, the coil's got enough juice in it to, uh, to fire the gasoline. We'll just dump straight down the carburetor. So bear with me. Um, you're going to see me do cartwheels here in the jig. If it, uh, if it, if it even does a little bit of, uh, it'll be, we'll be happy as, as can be. So, all right, with that said, let's grab and let's get this rotated a little more. Like I said, I'm very improvised deal here. All I'm doing here is just hooking my socket up because given that it's, it's a little bit longer, I might need somebody just, you guys just push that socket on or the extension on to oh, back up a little bit there we go just push it on until she clicks perfect thank you all right now this breaker bar on here let's and i have not i turned it about just a just a fuzz earlier Hopefully we can get it to go here. It did move. Hopefully my extension's not just, I had a screwdriver on it and did it by hand earlier. It didn't sound good. Okay, so, so much for that tool. <laughs> well, there's reality. That stud doesn't have enough oomph. Well, let's see. Hopefully this doesn't blow us out of the water so quick. I hate to just put it. You want to put on a little more leverage? Yeah, if we got it. That's the problem. I'm tempted to pull this. See, I can get it with a screwdriver. I just can't get it with that. Didn't have enough enough oomph. This just maps. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a longer. I mean, I can get it with a screwdriver. It's just the fan is right, right in my arms. Well, let's see. Yeah, maybe we won't be able to turn it all the way over. Ideally, we would. 
And the reason I want to do that is just to avoid, yeah, uh, I guess a big ridge and and make a, a big pain for us when the starter hits. If say something was broke or whatever's in the cylinder wall, we could really we could give ourselves more uh, more work than needed, but at the same time, it's gotta be done, it's gotta be done. All right, uh, 600 crazy people like me, huh? Here we go, so maybe, maybe I just pull the fan out of my way. How about that? That's just a hop and a skip here, right? This should be simple, right? <laughs> so, um, I guess as we're going, we take any questions or anything crazy like that? A lot of cheering on. We've got two requests for a Hellcat swap. <laughs> uh, one I want to swap with ourselves. We've got a demon motor. We've got a demon motor in the back. But, uh... I'd love to if I had it. And it wouldn't have helped... And it really wasn't the part that broke, so it wouldn't help either. Uh, but great idea. And that peg on the, you know, the provision on the front of the starter, really three eighths is about all you can get on it anyway. Yeah, so we have a, this is a 1950 3600 Chevy. Uh, I believe this is a Thrift Master, possibly. Um, and it is the Stove Bolt 216. So it is the precursor to the, uh, you know, 235s and, and such that were more prominent in the 60s. They did have a, there was three, uh, three engines these, this year, and I, there was a 235, but not the later version. And then there's a 261, I think it was. Um, this one's pretty simple. I mean, it's, uh, call it a one barrel carburetor on a pretty plain intake manifold. I don't know what kind of horsepower these had, probably not a whole lot. I would guesstimate 120. And I'd say it had, of course being a farm truck, it had more torque than it had any, anything else. And where I'm at on it right now is I'm trying to get this to turn over by hand first before I put a, put the starter to it. And we don't know what the condition of the starter is. We just pulled this out of, call it the woods, alongside of a guy's house yesterday. And uh, it was interesting. We had to pull a, I don't know, 60s something um, Thunderbird out of the way. And uh, the frame on that was so rotted that when we hooked the, the winch to the rear axle, it literally started tearing the car in half. Um, it was so rusted. We, um, but we got that out of the way. It was that particular car was sunk down into the, into the world by about well up to the door line, center of the door line. So that one was pretty bad. Uh, there's actually some good pieces off of it. If you watch our uh, red line update that will go live uh, later here. Um, That'll show you that car. And along with a few others that were there. And it's also part of the last, one of the last barn find hunts out of Traverse City. So that's where we came across this vehicle in the first place. A uh, gentleman, literally two miles as the fo uh, crow flies to the east of us had, uh, well, I would say 30 cars. 
in his yard and uh, and garage and stuff. And uh, I saw this right away and was like, ooh, that needs to come with us. So lo and behold, here it is. And we're going to, again, we're going to do a red line rebuild on the engine. But uh, before we do that, we wanted to see if we could get this to start. And I apologize for the delay that I'm taking this fan off. Could have done this earlier, but I uh, yeah. had optimistic thoughts of just turning it with that homemade tool I was so proud about. But evidently the exhaust manifold bolts weren't as stout as I thought they would be to to uh, work as a lever. Notice the weld didn't break though. That's the most important part. So the bolts came out with no problem, but the hub's got enough gook on it that Oh, here it comes. So the intention here, if anybody's wondering, what are you going to do with that rusted piece of pickup truck? What we're going to do is we're going to make it run. And we're going to make it drive around the parking lot in the next couple weeks. And then after that, boy, you never know where you might see it because it'll depend on how much we can get done in the time we have and no different than anybody else. We've got lots of projects to do, but uh, we are energetic at, at, at the most here and uh, probably a whole lot crazy, but that's right. It's no fun doing nothing. At least I'm not beating my hand up so bad on them. Well, it's got a little pulley on that pump. Hmm. Just a pinch more room would be good. Is it? Well, I'm going to tell you what. That comment just came in, and it is live. 100% live. 100%. Yeah, no kidding. That's why we're spending 10 minutes on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick for me, just say what you're doing. Though. All right, so for the red line update, is that where we're at? Yeah, just, just give me a quick, I'm taking the fan off. Too. All right, so I got the fan. I took some time here to get the fan out of the way. My tool to rotate the crankshaft broke. Um, I really didn't want to take more time and try to re-weld that up. I don't think I could make like a half inch uh, fit in there. So I can get it to turn with about a you know, 10 inch screwdriver, but everything is so tight. I'd like to get at least a full turn on it, but I might, uh, Tell you what, I think we're going to cut bait and just uh, give it a whirl on the starter and see what happens. Yeah, we'll get to throw the battery up in there. So, yeah, if you want to climb in there, Ben, I'll, uh, I'll get the, the fresh 6-volt battery up there and on some, on the turn, or on the line. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> So, there's our fresh battery. <clears throat> Into our air conditioned floor. Now I did go through and make sure that we have, you know, at least battery line, uh, battery wires that are making connection to where they're supposed to make connection to. Uh, unlike, Ford of this vintage, 
the Chevys are uh, negative to negative ground and uh, positive power. No smoke yet, right? <clears throat> yeah. Leave the doors open so I can run. Yep. Here, let me slide past you here. I, you might as well just hop in the seat. It'd be easy. On this side? Yeah. Fair enough. <clears throat> this is a six um, volt system, right? Yes, this is a six volt system. And I'm just putting some, uh, I'm not gonna mess around trying to tighten up the, the uh, battery wires that are on it. So I'm just gonna use some vice grips to hold them on tight. Did clean them up just so they have at least some amount of surface to, that's clean. Okay, we're not trying to drive this across country. We just want to see if we can. Let's see if we can just roll it over first and then. Right now, all four wheels are locked, too. One is open. Is, oh. I think that That's one is the, the, yeah, the left side is open, is free. So it, it, will, it will go left, but not very well. Um, all right, let's get this out of the way. Yeah, yeah, I should make sure there's. We haven't had that out yet. Let's make sure there's no rat's nest in the in the air cleaner. That's that's a good idea. There shouldn't be because this has been. I mean, appears to have been on the on the truck. We didn't take it off. I actually have not had it off at all. Um, I mean, that's actually a good thing when you're looking for a. You know, you're looking at something out in the woods, you get an idea of what condition the motor is going to be in. Is if the air cleaner is on it and if there is or isn't any nest in it. Uh, if you remember the nail head, that had, well, not only a nest, it still had, I think, something living in it. When we were pouring it out. So this is the oil bath, well, part of the oil bath. Let's see. It's holding it. There we go. So it just sets down on there. Got a little clamp. Oop. Yeah, let's get this done there. So this is what's referred to as an oil bath filter. So you got what literally is, well, it's steel wool uh, wrapped up here as the filter, but then it pulls it down. I think this is oil bath. Maybe it's not. I am going to change my mind on what I'm saying there. That's always handy. Okay. That's out of the way. Where's my flashlight? I had a flashlight, there it is. Mm -mm. Let's just peer down this. Oh, she's clean, actually. Wow, okay. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Well, Ben, let's see. Uh, so this does not have a, call it modern solenoid on it. What it has is a physical, I'll call it a mechanical solenoid. So there's a button on the floor and uh, right next to the gas pedal, to the right of the gas pedal. And it has a, a pivot point here in this lever arm. It's similar to like, I mean, we've, we did the Model A a while back. It's similar to that in the fashion that there's just a physical rod that pushes down. This has some mechanism to it. So as when Ben pushes that down uh, in, the, in the cab, it's gonna push this plunger 
And if our contact's good enough in there, it is going to make contact and then send juice from the starter or, you know, make the connection from the positive to the ground side and, and spin the starter over. So with that, we don't have a fan blade in the way anymore. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, well, Ben, uh, cross your fingers and toes and let's see if we get the starter to function. All right, you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Look at that, hey? Ben, it spins. Nice, okay. One step forward. Now let's get these, what's that? That's a, it's a pretty, yeah, that's, I mean, so I don't have, what was the date? We did find a registration, I don't remember what the data, the registration date was sometime in the 70s, wasn't it? If I remember right. Yes. So this hasn't been registered since the 70s. We'll presume it hasn't ran since the 70s. Now, we, I mean, literally this was in the trees. Um, so for this to, to turn over is phenomenal. We did not touch the starter. We literally cleaned up the battery line to it. We got a fresh battery on it. It's, it, only, it turns over that slow because it's six volt. And that's what they do. Um, all right, enough of that. I'm gonna take and put spark plugs in it. Well, hold it. I gotta, let's not get ahead of myself here. I need to pull, let's pull the cap off and clean. Definitely are gonna want to clean, clean up the points. Yeah, I'm gonna pull all the wires out of the way. But somebody replaced this wire at one time and routed it perfectly over the cap. That's pretty handy. Okay, all the two clamps are off. Yeah, let's get a flat screwdriver here. Sticky. Ooh, sticky and gunky. So there's tension on the spring, we're good there. The cap doesn't look that bad. I mean, considering. Let's grab a little sandpaper. Get this up. Now normally I would clean these and blah, blah, blah. All the right things, but that's not what I'm after. Regardless of if this starts, it's gonna be rebuilt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, regardless of this fires up, it is it is going to be rebuilt. Um, but just wanna all right, so we have some point gap, so that's cool. That's it down back down on there. Let's get this slid back up. Cap back on. And latched here. That side. Emma. By the way, happy Wednesday, everybody. It's hump day, as they say. All right, here we go. So now, thankfully our plug wires, notice too, in the 50s, they didn't need to use uh, any sort of boot on here. If they, I guess, misfired, they wouldn't know the difference. Uh, we got some fresh plugs. And quite honestly, I put fresh, I'm only putting fresh plugs in this because, well, I'm gonna put fresh plugs in it anyway. So might as well. 
Well, I'll do her now. Hey, can, it's hard to see, but you can still, underneath the, the oil here, it's still, you can just make out that it's starting to say thrift. Um, and I think it's Thrift Master is the, is the name they put on these engines. Um, of course, I guess you could say this is the precursor to the famous Blue Flame 6 that three years after this, they put in the Corvettes. Um, yes, Corvettes had six cylinders, straight sixes for the first two years, I believe. And then 55 is when they put, on, put the 265s together and started running them. Oh, come on. Uh, there was questions about did you lubricate inside the cylinders? Uh, what I did in the cylinders is put PB Blaster in them. That is the only lubrication I'm putting in there for right now. Um, it's a light oil. I think it'll, for what we want to do, it'll be fine. I didn't want to... I didn't want to load it up with a bunch of oil to where I have to um, worry about fouling plugs immediately. And that's not what we're after. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to get this running so I can drive it anywhere. I'm just trying to get it running to, I guess, put a smile on our faces. So when we're later on in the project and we're like, the project's getting the best of us at some point, we can uh, we can watch the video and say, well, look, it ran at one point. Let's get her done. <laughs> if it never runs, then at least we don't have to. Uh, oh man, we worked on it for two months and it ran nope. better when it was sitting in the field. Oh for no, years. that won't happen. <laughs> we this? always find a way, whether it's finding a new blocking head like we did with the nail head, nail head, or having to weld the. Um, <laughs> Well, the Put a, uh, block back up for the Hemi. For the Pontiac. Hemi, we had to uh, fill a plug. We put a pipe plug in it. Oh, is that what we did? Mm-hmm. Yep, for fine the, fine thread pipe plug. Leak. Yeah. leak. Yep. Yep. But regardless, where there's a will, there's a way. Okay. Now, we have no ignition switch. But we have alligator. Here's our ignition switch. So I guess I could try to see if there's spark. Um, or we could just dump fuel after it and call it a day. How's that sound? All right. So here's our positive wire. And tracing here, this obviously, this wire going to your distributor is going to your ground so I don't need to see the coil this is gonna has to be my ground so my other terminal over here is my positive um, for this very second I'm gonna take this back off leave that there let me grab my squirt bottle and uh, And for all those people who want to know if we are ever safe, yes, we are always safe. I will have a fire extinguisher beside me. It is ready to go. Uh, because even though my eyebrows are light, I do like to keep as many of them as I can. Uh, like everybody else. So, all right, Ben, let's... Uh, Uh, that's a darn good question. Maybe he can look that up and tell me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's what the nickname has always been. It's got two bolts that holds the valve cover on. That's what Leroy Wolf just said. The valve cover bolts yeah. are the stove bolts. Yeah, that's, that's what would be my guess, just by looking at things. Um, I, so to get, to get into a couple of real quick things, real fast here. So uh, it's, it's interesting that the... You know, the top of the fuel pump, mechanical fuel pump, has a glass bowl on top of it. That's your filter. Um, but just the point that there's glass underneath the hood, and that's typically a no-no, especially around fuel. Um, and then this is your uh, draft tube. So every motor has to have, 
it, it builds up crankcase pressure. It has to have some way to vent it. And this is that vent. So it is literally a tube into the crankshaft, uh, crankcase that vents directly out to the ground. Um, and of course, you're always going to pick up a little bit of oil vapor and such. So no matter what you did, this motor will always drip a little at some point in time. And it's not a gasket, it's just a function of driving. Um, today's world, we use EGRs, we use all the emission control stuff to eliminate that. Those motors still generate crankcase pressure. They, it all has to go somewhere. Today, we just burn it opposed to letting it go out. Uh, we're also running a, quite a few more cars than what we did in the day of 1950, so there's a reason for that. All right, so Ben, with that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to just, I'm going to put a little fuel down here. Um, I may have you crack the throttle some is all. Okay. But otherwise, uh, I'm going to hook the ignition up, what I think is up on minus the key. And uh, go ahead. Let's see what happens. All right, cracking the throttle some. Yep. Ready? Yep. <laughs> Okay, stop. Let's look and just. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Smells like old. Okay. Let's look and see if we have any. Go ahead and crank it over a little bit. Okay, it looks to me like our the coil may be dead. Uh, try cleaning up where that positive is hooking to it because I right here? To dig to get power. That's what you're thinking? Yeah. That's probably a good good idea. Because when good. I did the test earlier, I had to really jab it in right. to get any kind of progress. Okay. Uh, we could even check, across, check voltage across the coil. That would tell us real fast if we have just a bum coil, right? And I have a 12 volt coil, but I don't know that that's, if that'll work or not, we could try it, right? Ain't <laughs> gonna hurt a thing. All right, so voltage, or DC. This here to here should have voltage across coil, right? Here in millivolts. There you go. Thought it was an auto, but that's fine. So looks like we got an open coil. Let's see. Do we have a 12 volt battery or I have a 12 volt coil, is that what we need? No, I just got a suggestion that the light bulbs are six volts and they'll burn out for the starter to work. Yeah, we can we can put a, we can put our jump pack on if we need more juice. Uh, I think the main issue right now is I think our coil is no no bueno. So, a little help from our friends. You all right, buddy? Where did I put that coil at? Stay here. Um, so I have a coil, but of course it's connected to the stand back over on the other side. So we'll have to pause a brief moment for our station identification. <laughs> uh, can you reach over here? Yeah, come on. Up. A little. Back, behind the scenes, behind the scenes, behind the scenes. <laughs> so tucked back here is the, the, the motor we just finished. Uh, literally last week, it went up. If you have not watched the video for this, please do. Um, in fact, if you have not watched it, you are missing out because 
two million of your closest friends have already watched it and uh, or are continually watching it and we'd love to have you join in but what i'm going to do here is i have unfortunately it's a 12 volt coil won't be the end of the world if it doesn't work but i think at the end of the day we can always throw a 12 volt supply to it too and worst case is i think you burn out the points but again for what we're trying to accomplish not a problem Yeah, in fact, I'd, if you have a split screen right now, bring up another window. Take a second. No, not you. Take a second as a viewer and start get that clip ready. So as soon as we go off live here, you can uh, you can watch that uh, re redline rebuild of the Buick Nailhead. It's a 1965 Nailhead, and uh, it turned out pretty good. All right, so there's that now. Let's bring this over there. Five sixteenths to pull these lines off. <clears throat> and no, if you happen to see my minion in the back, we don't we don't keep him there. He's allowed to go home. So again, anybody that's questioning whether this is reality or not, this is as much reality as I can give you. My, uh, my computer says it's 12.47 p.m. on Wednesday. So we brought this over here almost exactly 24 hours. And now we're going to try to get some spark and life into it just to say we can. Or we did. And I don't know, what if I got another alligator clip? That would be really handy. I'm not making anybody dizzy running here. Too bad. Let's get this out of here. All right. Nothing else will have that wire not wrapped around there anymore. Great spot to hold it. People want to know where the bug eye sprite uh, came from. <laughs> so, in grand fashion, we were going, we were actually doing something with the nail head the other day, and uh, driving across town, the gentleman crossed our paths going with that in the back end of a pickup truck, or a back end of a trailer, I'm sorry, pulling a ratty old Jeep Cherokee. And um, I had made mention to Ben, I'm like, hey, look at that, there's a bug eye sprite clip. I said, boy, I sure hope they're not thrown out of the way, they're just moving. And sure enough, when I got in behind them, they were, uh, the guy had a, it was sitting on top of a refrigerator, bouncing around. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's probably going to the salvage yard. Sure enough, the next turn is for that, yeah, the, our yard right here, and that's exactly where I went with it. So we promptly whipped in behind them and flagged them down, asked them a couple questions about it, confirmed that that's what it was. It was cool anyway, it didn't really matter. And, uh, and for a poultry $10, brought it home. All right, Ben, 
I, with any luck here, are going to have a coil. Pardon? Did you tell me when your hands aren't uh, oh. making the connection? <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Let's see if we can get some spark this time. All right, you're good. Okay. All right. I am not uh, getting spark there. Well, um, tell you what, for just last resort here, let's try. Let's pull our, let's, let's put 12 volts on the system instead of, just gonna, I'm going to run it through the lines, but not, not to the battery here. So just basically just don't let it arc out in here, yep. right? So we'll put our Mac tools jump pack on here. Hint, hint. Poor Stanley. <laughs> okay. I'll go back under and let's just see if we get some. Should be able, should be able to get arc out of there. What's that? Did you check call bolts on that kernel? Oh, yeah. Because it should have 12 constant, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, maybe we have to the block. Positive to my uh, anywhere in the block, right? Are you good? Okay. Because here to here. Okay, I follow what you're saying. We're making the assumption that we got. Connection here, don't we? Aren't we? Hmm. All right. Well, one second. Uh, let's make sure we get spark. Otherwise, we're just spinning to spin. All right, go ahead. I'll hold it. Go ahead. Push it all the way down. Okay, so we don't have a good connection at those wires. Huh? I don't know if we're making enough of a connection. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's not connecting on this, this end of things here. It, it popped a little spark on the red one. I'm going to go pull my battery out of my car. No. We're not pulling any more parts from any of the cars for this. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I mean, we had 12 volts, so it's getting power, just not enough to. Oop, thank you. All right, try that. Here we go. Yep. <laughs> just not getting any spark. Do it. Sweet. Seconds. Uh, blasted. You want to just reiterate that, like, this is just for fun. Yeah. If we were actually needing to get it started, we'd spend a whole lot more time on it. But. Yep. All right. So, just a quick recap here, and we're just about done if we don't get this to fire, but. Uh, the whole point of this exercise was truly just to see if we could get this to fire on a live stream setup that uh, on, on this truck that's been sitting for at least 20 years um, in the woods. We've got it freed up to the point where it's turning over with the starter. We have not touched the starter, so that's uh, a miracle in itself. And uh, we've got some fresh plugs in it. All we've done to the ignition system is purely clean the um, uh, points, and now I've got a 12-volt coil on there. Uh, I'm going to double-check the ground going to 
from the coil to the distributor just in case there's some reason that that's not making connection because if it can't pass that uh, current from the coil to the distributor and then back to the uh, to ground then it won't uh, it won't fire obviously so we're going to do that but the whole idea is this motor is going to be pulled out this afternoon and we're going to start our uh, fresh red line rebuild on this 216 stove bolt uh, 1950s motor here but we're uh Again, we're just going to clean this up real quick and see if we can get. Because it could be a multitude of problems. But we, I mean, we just don't have any sparks, so. Seems nothing that we couldn't resolve, I'm sure, in a matter of a day. With doing a little more effort relative to cleanup. But quite frankly, we don't have the time to... Uh, to spend on that because we want to get deep into this vehicle as far as making it run and drive. Now when I say drive, I mean the ability to move under its own power and as my good friend Matt would say, steer and pull over. Stop and pull over I should say. Pull over and stop. I'll get it right eventually. Uh, but I think you guys get the idea. The idea is just to initially here get it running after the rebuild and uh, and and drive it around the parking lot. And then we're going to have a lot more fun with it after that. Uh, oh, what the heck! All right, I'll make it work by grabbing hold of it by my by just my bare hands here. Go ahead, Ben. Recon reconnect on our yeah. battery. That's what sparked over here was just the red. The red one? Yeah. I think it sort of shorted through whatever crappy connection I was trying to make. Whatever amount of corrosion's in there. Yeah. You want the metal? Okay. Yeah, that's we're just I'm just trying to get it to bite in. Um all right, go ahead. That's good. Yeah, we're not getting we're not getting any spark for whatever reason. Huh. Well, I'll tell you what. Here's my win. I got a new project in the in the shop. It's a stove bolt uh, two sixteen. I have never had one of these apart. This is as much as I've ever worked on one of these. So this will be my learning experience as possibly yours. And I'm sure there's a multitude of folks out there that have messed with these all of their lives. But I have not. Um, but we're going to learn, and we're going to get this thing running. And truly, the win is after that is it spins with the factory starter in the spot that it's, it was parked in. And we got a free engine, meaning it rotates free. Opposed to the nail head, I should not have to beat uh, the pistons out. And if I do, I will look at uh, the ridge. And we will cut the ridge out of this one, opposed to purely brute force, uh, even though that's still fun. So at any rate, I guess with that, hopefully we didn't bore you too bad. And if nothing else, we got you intrigued that, hey, there are vehicles out there sitting in yes. the woods. I'm just saying subscribe and they follow can still along. learn. We're going to update. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yep, subscribe to our, our YouTube channel for all the Redline Rebuild updates, the DIY videos, the live streams, all of those things that we do that we frankly feel are fun. This is what I enjoy, and I know my crew loves it as well. So uh, we will see you down the road.